Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. And now, here's our host, Dr. Vanessa Anceloni. Dear listener, welcome to Kardec Radio. We are here to talk about existential conflict. We're going to rely upon a beautiful book that was written by the spirit Juana de Angelis through the medium Divaldo Franco. And you can buy this book at uh, either the bookstore of the Spirit Society of Baltimore, as is Baltimore.org, or the Spiritist Group of New York, as GNY.org. And this book talks about several disturbing behaviors, as Juana de Angelis says, which present themselves as tests of resistance for the human individual. It focus, focuses under the light of psychology, psychoanalysis, and psychiatry, but always under the guidance of the Spiritist teachings. Joanna D'Angelo is here. She talks about several different types of existential conflicts in this book that she wrote, precisely in the year of 2005. She talks about fear, anger, laziness, jealousy, violence, love, death, psychological escapes, and many other conflicts. And you have here not only the explanation of the root cause of them, but most importantly, the therapeutic process that she recommends for each and every uh, problem that you may experience, including drug addiction, which is related to existential conflict as well. Well, we are here not by ourselves. We have Kirsten DeMello, who is helping us understand a little more about what Juana de Angelis proposes in this book. And to kickstart the program, we are going to stream to you a beautiful message a message that goes hand in hand with Kardec. Kardec himself, in the Spirit's book, he talks about the fact that Spiritism can bring teachings that shed new light onto psychological problems. And here is Joana de Angelis really developing that line of thought of Kardec, going very deep about the Spiritist psychology. As a previous program that we had this month about Joanna D'Angeli's books, including Existential Conflict. But specifically today, we'll talk about some of these existential conflicts that probably bother you, dear listener, or somebody that you know, or even people at your work, neighborhood, etc. And the message you're going to listen to now is from Joana de Angelis, and she's going to uh, tell us more about some of these problems that you may experience and how, in a spiritual way, we can really relieve that tension, psychologically speaking. It's a message from the book Living and Loving by Joana de Angelis and Divaldo Franco. You can buy that at the Spiritist Society of Baltimore's website. Right after the break, Kirsten DeMello will be here with us, helping us understand about some of these existential conflicts right after this message and the break. Chapter 13, Loneliness and Karma. You believe you cannot cope with the yearning for love. Sometimes you try to laugh, but your lips tighten in a sour grimace. You crave for affection and think nobody loves you, so you sink in somber melancholy. You strive for happiness, but your struggle seems to end in loneliness and anguish. You dream of a happy family with laughing children and someone to love you dearly and make your life a blissful gift. You suffer and think suffering has come to stay within your heart. However, you ignore the inner suffering of others. Many people walk about as if their lives were a bed of roses. They smile gently, as if parading in triumph. 
but they too may be facing great difficulties. Their troubles may be different from yours, but are not less afflicting. If you could attune your soul to theirs, you would be surprised to realize that many of them secretly wish they had your small share of happiness. Life on Earth is full of paradoxes because this is a planet of probation, spiritual education, redeeming atonement, and reparation. So do not be discouraged by your difficulties. Loneliness is your karma. If you are pessimistic, change your mental attitude and render service to others. Today you lack what once you had in plenty, but overlooked carelessly. Yesterday, you poured abuse on others and sinned against love. Your spiritual conscience knows what you must go through to atone for your past life mistakes. This is the reason why your moments of joy are so fleeting, and you soon return to your sadness, shutting yourself up in loneliness. It is also possible that those whom you have hurt in a past life have not forgiven you. If you keep your mind concentrated on bitter thoughts, you may attune to them and their remote resentment will reach you and harass you. React optimistically. Learn to forgive. Attune to the higher spheres of positive thoughts. Love without expecting fulfillment. Serve regardless of retribution. What good you do today will atone for your past errors. One day you shall find the love you seek. Jesus, the unloved lover of mankind, is still here with us. And his love for us is the same today as it was before, and as it will be forever. We will return to our program after these messages. Getting to the Light Spiritist Therapy for Discarnate Spirits is a small book that offers guidance to spiritist practitioners and spiritist counselors. Purchase your copy at www.ssbaltimore.org. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. If you missed out on a previous shows... No worries. We have an on-demand section of all previous shows and interviews. Go to our website at www.cardacradio.com. Spread the word. Kardec Radio. To learn more about Spiritism. Help prevent suicide by reading and sharing these books with others. Two great books are available to help in this Kardec Radio campaign to prevent suicide. Suicide, All You Need to Know by the international spiritist speaker Richard Simonetti. You can buy your copy at www.roundtablepublishing-uk.com. Also, Memoirs of a Suicide by the medium Yvonne Pereira. Buy your copy today at www.edi. CEI of America.com. Kardec Radio, live every Saturday at 11 a.m. Kardec Radio now offers more programs during the week and weekends. Every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can follow the beautiful program God at Home with Francisca Kranz and the British Spiritist Community. They will brighten your days by doing a God at Home meeting wherever you are in the world while teaching you how to do the same in your own home with your family and friends. Every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you will hear incredibly inspirational Spiritist talks directly broadcasted by Spiritist Network. There will be true educational moments to carry out to immortality. Every Saturday, live interviews, bridging health and spiritism with the host, Dr. Vanessa Anceloni. You may ask questions to the interviewed guests by calling 858-769-4705. And every Sunday, tune in to Spiritist Awareness at Kardec Radio. You will hear a series of segments on a diversity of spiritist topics. 
Kardec will broadcast the Spiritus Moment with Kirsten DeMello, the reading of the Spiritus book by John DeRosa and Steve Shepard, Spiritus in Your Life with Drs. Marco and Joyce Magalhães, Spiritus and the Gospel with Luis Sergio Marotta, Spiritus Education for Youth and Children with Bernadette Leal, Spiritus Music with James Marotta, Neuroscience and Spiritism with Dr. Vanessa Anceloni, and many more segments coming soon. Enjoy it all and nurse your soul with Kardec Radio. And now we return to our program. Dear listener, we are back and we are here to talk about existential conflicts. Fear is an existential conflict. But not only fear, there is also anger, laziness, jealousy, violence, love, death, psychological escapes, and many others, including drug addiction, etc. Well, what do we do? Why do they exist? Cruelty is also a form of existential conflict. Well, to help us understand more about this, which is in Joanna D'Angeli's book entitled Existential Conflicts, Kirsten DeMello is here with us to help us understand about Joanna D'Angeli's take on this. Thank you so much, Kirsten, for being with us at Kardec Radio today. Thank you, Vanessa, for having me. It's always a pleasure. Kirsten, Many people have problems in their lives, and sometimes they barely know that there is a name for it, existential conflict. Let us discuss a little bit so the listener can understand what existential conflicts are. Yes, absolutely. You know, Vanessa, what comes to our mind is that even the word existential is defined in almost all dictionaries is or relating to existence. So thereby the existential conflicts we have are just the fact that we are human beings or spirits in this evolutionary path. We have so many conflicts that we encounter along this path. So if we could rename the book or call it something else or use a different term, it would be called something like issues we endure in our evolutionary path. And so every person has existential conflicts, just some are more aware of it and some are less aware. And it's, I guess it's part of this process of becoming more conscious of what's going on with our own emotional life and within our relationships with other people. And it's important to identify what those issues are we can address it, right? Yes, and that's so interesting you're saying this because we could almost tell that existential conflicts, they are related to the the experience of the millennial soul. And it's not only something that is particularly related to this life in itself, this reincarnation alone. It's probably something that is connected to experiences in the continuity of life, life after life. So we could tell, Kirsten, to the listener that these conflicts are related to the evolution of the spirit, to previous life's experiences, and they and they are impacting in one reincarnation as a byproduct of these elements, experiences from previous lives, and also the experience of evolution itself, because existential conflicts, they are a sign of the fact that we are to evolve. Otherwise, we wouldn't be conflicted about anything. It's about being in a in a crossroad and having to decide to take either way. And in this case, we're talking about um, the decision of moving forward regarding so many aspects of our lives. So exactly. could we tell, right, Kirsten, could we, could we tell that these, for the most part, regarding all of the conflicts that Joanna DeAngelis talks about in her book, Existential Conflicts, that the root cause of them could be 
the evolution of the spirit in itself, reincarnation. Would you say that there are other ones that would also um, e explain the existence of exist existential conflicts? Absolutely. Actually, I'm not sure if it's in this book or in another um, book that was psychographed by Joanna, but actually I believe it might be in the book Open Your Heart and Find Happiness that was psychographed by the St. Gervaldo Franco. And Joanna says something that's interesting and, and I believe it helps us to understand how it, the existential conflict is formed or where it's generated at. And Joanna says that once we reach a point, and I'm paraphrasing what she says in my own words, once we, once we reach a point in our lives where we wish to change and become a new, let's say for in, in my case, a new woman, but my old ways, how I used to be, come in conflict with the new person who I want to be. So within that, that conflict of these two things, the existential conflict arises. An automatic emotional problem, psychological problem happens. The conflict arises. And we can see that some of the conflicts that she talks about um, in this particular book, it rises out of this. Sometimes we become angry or we're resentful or we feel guilt or jealousy. It's like you had made the statement that you just made. It's merely a manifestation that we are on this road of evolution. It's showing us that we are progressing, albeit slowly, as the spirits tell us in the spirits book, but that it's it's necessary. I believe that's why Joanna starts out this book in the introduction with her first sentence saying, the march of progress is inexorable, meaning we can't stop it. It's going to keep going because really, like you stated, Existential complex is just about this evolutionary path that we're on and we're bound to encounter things because we are, as you try to change something, conflict arises because it's the nature of change, we believe. But over time, as we were just discussing off air, that, you know, as, as we go through different phases in life, you know, with time we'll learn how to deal with it better. We will fine-tune how we address conflicts that occur in our lives. Maybe in the next century or so, as we evolve, we'll be able to fine-tune it. But for right now, I guess this is just the level that we're at. We're just learning how to manage our emotions better, right? Mm -hmm. It's interesting you're saying that because reading her preface, she dedicates this book as a tribute to the the book Heaven and Hell by Alan Kardec. Yes. And... And that's quite interesting because when we go to that book, it talks about the state of mind of so many spirits that passed away. And there you find so many of them going through a lot of existential conflicts, either when they were incarnated or in the afterlife, telling us that existential conflicts is beyond the physical body. It's about a state of mind. It's about uh, how we're feeling. And and she even mentions about the fact that some happiness is not the opposite of unhappiness, she says. Mm -hmm. It's actually something that is the state of well-being, the harmony between the ego and the self is the result of more and spiritual conquest. It's quite fascinating the way she addresses uh, this conquest of happiness, as she says, and the proposal in the book of addressing these many issues regarding how we feel about ourselves because it's beyond being the physical body. Sometimes people feel like, oh, I wish I, I could die because if I were dead, I wouldn't feel anything. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. The conflicts we have will probably intensify because in the afterlife there is no distraction. There is no way not to think or feel what is there in us. It's right the opposite. We'll be immersed full time in those feelings much more intensely than we do when we are incarnated. Correct? Yeah, absolutely. It's a fallacy. It's a false idea people have that post-mortem, 
you know, when I die, I, I shall experience no conflict and no pain. But it's a perfect example. I, we thought it was beautiful and perhaps even an aspect of the introduction that maybe some people might even overlook and think, oh, that's nice, she's dedicating the book. But it's, she's dedicating because, like you said, this book, it's the theory of how everything happens. Not even the theory because we know that it's true. And heaven and hell is all the examples, it's the cases of all the different types of existential conflicts we have. What happens after we pass on? We continue on with the same problems. They don't go away. We just merely shift circumstances. But the same emotions I have today, I'm going to have when I pass away if I maintain this particular lifestyle. And that could be good, and that could be bad, depending upon what I'm feeding myself. But it's it's very interesting. It's quite beautiful, and it's something, when we read this um, for the second and third time, it really made us reflect about the need to study codification, to have it in hell specifically, to reread it, to remind ourselves about the many conflicts that exist out there and how we should work more on ourselves and help one another, right? Yes, that's so true. Solidarity is certainly the word, and, and Joana D'Angeli is is really um, proposing that in many of the cases he is as a therapy for uh, existential conflicts. Now, Kirsten, the the first thing she addresses in the book, it's, it's all about emotions, of course. We're talking about emotions and how they really change our vibrations. Um, this is interesting because emotions can be so overwhelming at times. People don't want to feel, they feel them. And when they feel it, it's almost like it's taking over the whole life of the person and they have to make a whole effort not to be imprisoned in those emotions that here represent the existential conflict. One of them Joanna DeAngelis talks about a psychological scape. Um, nowadays, life in our society is filled with distractions, illusions, and Joanna DeAngelis begins the book in chapter one talking about existential, uh, this psychological escape and solutions for it because they can really create damage. Kirsten, what exactly would be this psychological escape? Well, Joanna explains it in the following pre or the following manner. She explains first that, you know, a psychological escape to some degree is normal. It's normal even at a physiological level when we are overstimulated by outside things. Um, that we retract a little bit because our senses would go into overload, or even psychologically when we're going through something for us to sort of step back a little bit. But she talks about existential conflicts more so, or what she means to say more so, in a way where it becomes pathological, to such a point where it becomes a habit, where you retract considerably from the problems in your life. And she actually even says it on page 14 of the book, and she says that the phenomenon becomes so natural, repetitive, that it, we don't even notice it until it, it dominates us. So it's when we are unable to deal with what's going on around us that we do the psychological escape. And she explains it in many different ways. And the reason why it happens, obviously she discusses it at the point of at the emotional level how it started, and she mentioned something interesting also on page 14, This how it begins to be created at a young age or early on in life, how it begins to be created like, like a habit. And that's why when we are educating our children, it's so important to educate them with good habits, to not have this habit of wanting to run away and not deal with situations. And she even talks about it with children that escape from responsibility by lying and have this creative imagination. It's very interesting because sometimes when we read self-help books, they talk more in reference to the adult. When we see how much 
she emphasized in this book about re-educating or educating our children and guiding them in the right direction. Because it can, it can be quite detrimental if we don't um, sort of nip it in the butt early on in life, right? Yes, exactly. So nowadays there is so much of psychological escapes um, that people use so many means to really run away from reality and not feel or not even realize what is happening in their inner selves. So it's so beautiful that at the end, Kirsten, she proposes solutions for it. And when she proposes solutions for psychological escapes, I love when she says at the very, very end uh, that guilt becomes self-forgiveness Fear is made an incentive for continuous progress and uncertainties turn into convictions around victory for the self through holistic health. It's it's so encouraging and inspirational to to feel and also to be certain that this is actually a reality, that instead of feeling guilty for feeling guilt we can actually turn into self-forgiveness. And uh, when we feel afraid, nobody likes to feeling afraid, but she says, well, feeling afraid can be also a way, if you take it in a positive way, as means for continuous progress. And here I remember, Kirsten, when Deepak Chopra, he talks about uncertainties in life, and he says one of the the laws of life is the law of uncertainty. And he says quite wisely, when I realize that I don't know, maybe I'm afraid because I don't know what's happening in my life or etc. It's a sign that I, I am at a place in my life I've never been before. And that's the reason why I'm clueless. So the good sign is that if I am where I've never been before, it means I'm moving forward. So you know, that's, it's so in, yeah, yeah, it's so, it's so interesting that you say that because she went on page twenty one. She makes a statement about true psychological health, and she says that almost all winners lived moments of fear and perplexity before they reached the success that now crowns their existence. So I think that that explains what you just said about Deepak Chopra. That you're going to go through the uncertainty, we feel fear, we're perplexed, we're not sure where to go. But we should be okay to some extent with that, knowing that you know, we're on this pathway and that, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a progress. It's some form of progress that we're making from the state of, dormancy to now slow awakening. So it's interesting because oftentimes we always seek to know everything. We want to know what's going on, what's going to happen. Or we just, we, we fear fear. We fear change. And we're just so scared. But if you face it, and there's actually a really good chapter in the book that's entitled Fear. And when we just face it and have more faith, it's amazing what we realize we are capable of overcoming. You know, Vanessa, we were just discussing with a colleague who's going through a considerable amount of problems in her personal life, and she's been consulting actually a psychic. And um, believe it or not, of all the people, she came to us and discussed this, and she said she's been going quite frequently because she's not sure what she should do. And because she came to us for advice, we just advised her, you know, Pray and to be okay with not knowing. And not, not knowing is okay. It's about finding your way and being somewhat comfortable with yourself. So it's interesting that Joanna says this and Deepak Chopra is just giving us a verification of what, you know, spiritism has brought to us. It's interesting. It's a universal idea that Kardec says is everywhere anyway, right? Exactly. And, and, and that's the beauty, not knowing and uh, it's a part of the process. If we knew it all, we wouldn't be here. That's the reason why we're living. Kirsten, we're going to give a short break, but when we come back, we would like to begin by discussing 
fear. You mentioned about fear, and this is one of the number one existential conflicts that really can create a lot of, a lot of damage in people's lives. And we really want to understand it and know how Joana de Angelis addresses it in terms of solutions and therapeutic uh, process, okay? We will return to our program after these messages. New release, Liberation. In this compelling narrative, Andre Louise emphasizes the work of high-order spirits in the effort to convert the spirit Gregorio to the good, an effort that culminates with the unforgettable re-encounter with his mother, herself a highly evolved spirit, wherein he surrenders to the irresistible call of love. The book also contains information on how unhappy spirits act as they try to involve incarnates in their wiles. The spirit author tells of the intercession of high-order spirits on behalf of human beings, demonstrating the divine compassion that grants to all the blessed opportunity to free themselves by means of study, labor, and persevering service in the practice of the good. Buy your copy today at www.edicei-of-america.com. Spread the word. Kardec Radio to learn more about Spiritism. One Spirit is supposed for your children? At Eddie Save America, you will find a collection of them. From the best-selling book, Our Father, in which the spirit May May through Chico Xavier brought countless poems, stories, and folk tales based on the Lord's Prayer, to the beautiful and educational collection by the author Adelison Sales on Back to School and many others. Buy your copy today at www.eddiesaveamerica.com. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. If you missed out on previous shows, no worries. We have an on-demand sections of all previous shows and interviews. Go to our website, www.kardecradio.com. Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. Spiritism for Everyone, the online study of Spiritism. This year with the in-depth study of the book Genesis by Alan Kardec. Join us every Wednesday evening through the web from any computer or mobile device, no matter where you are in the U.S. or the world. Spiritism for Everyone is free, open to all, and requires no registration. For more information, go to www.spiritus.us. Spiritism for Everyone is a program of the United States Spiritist Council. And now we return to our program. Dear listener, we are back. We are talking about existential conflict. And you can read the whole book by Joana de Angelis or Divaldo Franco, Existential Conflict. This book can be acquired over the Internet, either this website of the Spiritist Society of Baltimore, www.ssbaltimore.org, or the group of the Spiritist Group of New York, sgny.org. And we are here with Kirsten DeMello, who is helping us understand more about Joana D'Angeli's um, proposal on it. And we would say she wrote this book as a tribute to the Kardec's book, Heaven and Hell. Why? Because she teaches us in this book that existential conflict is beyond being in this reincarnation. It is about being a millennial soul. It's about being in the process of evolution through those moments in life in which we don't know what to do. We're stuck with some form of emotion. We're still ruminating a lot of fear or a lot of anger, etc. Talking about fear and anger, these are two existential conflicts that we're going to discuss right now. Let us begin with fear. Kirsty, fear. Fear, says Andre Louise in the book No Solar, is so contagious and at the same time so paralyzing. No wonder many people play with 
people fear to control them. What is exactly this existential conflict, Kirsten? That's a good question, Vanessa. We shall definitely go to, go to Joanna for that response. Joanna explains to us that it is something that is developed, whether it's something small that can be normal, because Joanna says that you know we are all victims of fear in relation to the unknown, so it, it's a normal occurrence. That is when it comes to a point where it becomes a syndrome, and she says that it becomes a pathology in many ways because it creates syndromes of panic and serious depressive imbalances. And it actually can even be formed over a lifetime or many lifetimes. And we become fearful of things because of, she mentions to us, the opening of this chapter because of guilt. And it later manifests, whether later on in life, or in that current life, we become fearful. A good example of this could be something like in the book In Life Goes On, when um, one case, one of the characters, he had murdered someone, his um, current wife's ex fiance So he had these syndromes of well, melancholy, but amongst others, um, depression, because he had this somewhat fear of being caught somewhere inside of him if we could do a psychological evaluation. But these aren't, this is just one example. Fear can be pathological for other reasons. It could be past life traumas or current life traumas, and we're afraid to endure that again. But one of the most simplest of recommendations that Joanna gives is just really to face it in a rational sense, right, which is one of the makes sense to us, to face your fear. It's what everyone says, right? Yes. That's correct. And fear, the causes of fear can can be so many, as she says, like the endogenous and the exogenous, meaning many lives, obsessions. And this is the element, Kirsten, we would like to discuss a little more with uh, for the listener. When she talks about causes of fear being related to obsessions, so let us share a little more about how obsessions can really impact on fear. We just had Halloween, which is very interesting and funny. But let's talk about horror movies, for example, and uh, how spirits can play with us fear-wise um, at moments in which people, for example, are cherishing this. Uh, you know, moments of watching horror movies, etc. Can can we break it down a little more for the listener? Absolutely. There's actually a, a really good book. It's in the Andre Louise series. It's entitled Action and Reaction. There's a really good chapter. Unfortunately, it escapes me at this moment, but I'm sure I, we could remember it later, where they talk about these, these things that you just mentioned, that whenever we watch something, it gets archived in our mind. So later, when spirits who wish to scare us or make us afraid, they extract that particular file and they bring it up in our in our mind for us to be fearful. There are cases in the book where a woman who had this idea of a devil or half-man, half human like figure, like a Balthazar type figure, half man, half animal. And it was horrific for her because for her in her religion this was the devil. So the images in her mind were impregnated. So in the book they t- they tell us about how powerful our thoughts are and it really brings us to this idea of responsibility that whatever you watch will be archived in your mind at, at a later time, good or bad can be brought up again. So it's very tricky. It's very dangerous in in a sense that for those people who can fall under an obsession, or anyone really can, if if we are balanced and watch ourselves, these ideas can be reproduced in our mind. And we would recommend people to read the book Action and Reaction. I believe it's uh, chapter 6 or 7, if I'm incorrect. I apologize, but Mm -hmm. it talks. How, more about how powerful our minds are, and it's and that's for for good or for bad, right? 
Exactly. Makes and sense. when when she talks about uh, fear, she's talking about uh, the solutions, uh, how to eradicate it. And it's so beautiful, Kirsten, when she talks about uh, how to eliminate fear, she encourages us to be aware of them, pay attention to them, don't run away or pretend or or feel like, oh no, I'm not, how, how come I'm feeling afraid? No, take a look, pay attention, be aware, and she says, be willing to face it, so have courage and be open to transform because it's possible. And she talks about loving ourselves as the greatest therapy for all types of fear and prayer therapy. So Joana de Angelis really brings a um, new perspective from the immortal view in life. Now, there's another type of existential conflict that is so common nowadays, Kirsten, and uh, we're yet to conquer this type of uh, existential conflict, which is anger. And I will never forget when Chico Xavier said that 80% of inmates are imprisoned because they couldn't... they. They had a hard time dealing with their anger. So, Kirsten, anger. I remember also the Dalai Lama saying, or Thich Nhat Hanh, the Buddhist monk who got the Nobel Prize for his efforts of peace in Vietnam. He, saw, he has a book actually entitled Anger, Cooling the Flames. And he talks about from a Buddhist perspective that anger is something that maybe even physiological. So we shouldn't feel guilty for it, though we should make efforts to tame it, to really manage it. So he talks about anger management, which is a very widespread concept nowadays, though people don't actually get the training on it. So we, what is on the behind the scenes? Kirsten, of anger regarding the spiritist perspective, as one of the angels discusses. Well, from a spiritist perspective, we would say that it's part of our evolution, that when we were in the animal kingdom, as Joanna says, it was part of our mechanism and instinct to save, save ourselves. Um, you know, when the animal, as she says, is being pursued or is being attacked, you know, it's part of surviving, but when we reach the human kingdom, it's transformed into egoism, and it, it's transformed into nothing good for us. We would say it's somehow coming out of the animal kingdom, it's somehow the remnant of an instinct turned emotion that needs to be refined. It needs to be worked out and worked on, and, and really just worked out to a point where it no longer exists anymore, we're not reacting because anger is coming out of, like she says, when our, when our ego is wounded. And perhaps when we become more self-aware and less egotistical and less ego-involved, we'll be able to manage our emotions much better, especially with anger, in such a way where we don't take things personal anymore. And we were learning, studying a little bit about um, how businesses are run, and what makes them most successful. And we're learning through different research papers we've found was that it's the ability to manage one's own emotions and manage a team of emotions and learning not to take things personally but using the best of everybody. And it's interesting because anger is so common, as you stated, that it almost becomes common and we, people often say, I get, I just get angry. I'm just, I, I have a short temper. And we label ourselves sometimes as such. But Joanna, she educates us and tells us, and I think that's why, as you mentioned, that the Buddhist monk tells us that we shouldn't be angry at ourselves. Ironically, over it, we shouldn't be upset, but understand ourselves, because as Joanna says, it's this love therapy that will help us to overcome these existential conflicts, these emotional disturbances that we have. Right? 
Yes, 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 Kirsty. When we talk about anger, we talk about something that really can be uh, an impediment for people nowadays. And amongst the many things that Joana de Angelis says, and you already mentioned some, I, I was quite uh, um, happy when she talks about the importance of passive therapy. Um, besides psychotherapy, etc., she talks about people going to the spirit center and receiving passes to really domesticate these feelings of anger and, and this state of mind, etc. So telling the listener, if you have a hard time, though emotional, don't forget it's impacting in your vibratory field, in your spiritual body, in your mind. And passive therapy in the spirit is center, Kirsten, we can't emphasize enough the importance of receiving those fluids, those energies that can really counterbalance and even help people conquer difficult feelings such as anger, right? Absolutely. No, absolutely. It's one of the great, we would say, options, for lack of a better term, that our, our spiritist centers offer us. And you want to end also that this, despite the fact that we have spiritist centers, we can receive passes and support and fraternal assistance. She kind of ends this chapter with this, sort of reminding us that the need for self-control, that the patient or the person themselves, ultimately we must have this self-control over ourselves. And oftentimes we say that we need to give ourselves mini pep talks. We, we, we have to know what triggers our anger, to know to give ourselves a little pep talk and do a small prayer and ask for assistance, but to also utilize all the, the amazing opportunities that our spirit to center can offer, as you mentioned, such as the passes or fraternal assistance to help us, or psychotherapy, as, as you mentioned, that she mentions here. Utilize all of it in this process because we're really, we're still evolving, trying to find out what are the, the best ways to manage all of these emotions, all these conflicts mm-hmm. that were, that's occurring, right? Yes, correct. Kirsten, we're going to give another break, but when we come back, let us emphasize two major existential conflicts that can be really um, damaging to people's lives and their relationships. Guilt is one of them. Guilt is something that is really um, a problem and resentment. When we come back from the break. We will return to our program after these messages. Books of Andre Louise. Through the hands of the most prolific medium of all times, Chico Javier, the spirit doctor Andre Louise wrote a series of books that unveil the mechanisms of life and life after life. From the best selling novel, No So Lar, Our Home, to And Life Goes On, the reader will find illumination for a fulfilled life on earth as well as immortal happiness. Check the many titles available at the international distributor, EDI. CEI of America. Their website is www.edicceiofamerica.com. Spread the word. Kardec Radio. To learn more about Spiritism. Spiritist Network. Your gateway to on-demand Spiritist videos. www. SpiritistNetwork.com Nourish your soul with Kardec Radio. Traveling to another country? Immigrating elsewhere? Prepare yourself by reading the book Among Brothers of Other Lands in which several loving and wise spirits wrote through the hands of Chico Xavier and Waldo Vieira, telling all of us the tips and hints of a successful transition to a new land. Buy your copy today at www.edicceiofamerica.com. Do you want to 
spiritist books for your children. At Odyssey of America, you will find a collection of them, from the best-selling book Our Father, in which the spirit may may through Chico Xavier brought countless poems, stories, and folk tales based on the Lord's Prayer. To the beautiful and educational collection by the author Ada Yuson Salis on Back to School and many others. Buy your copy today at www.adasayofamerica.com. And now we return to our program. We are back, dear listener, and we're talking about existential. It's good to talk about emotions, dear listener. The more we talk about them, the more we are aware of them and the more we are able to manage them, be in control. The less we we think about, the less we talk about and address these issues, the bigger they become in our subconscious. And that's why we're dedicating this program to existential conflicts, such as the ones we discussed before with Kirsten DeMello, based on the book by Joana de Angelis and Divaldo Franco, Existential Conflicts. We talked about fear. We talked about anger. But now, guilt. Kirsten, guilt is so paralyzing. So many people feel like punishing themselves, self-punishment, because they made a mistake. And Joana de Angelis addresses guilt from a, an existential conflict type of a, of a problem. What are the causes of uh, of guilt, according to yeah. the Spiritist perspective? According to the Spiritist perspective, there are, we say, two general reasons why guilt is formed. Either it's formed somehow in our childhood, you know, in accordance with perhaps the way we were raised, Poor parenting, sometimes parents throw their own conflict onto their own children, producing uh, an unnecessary guilt, or it comes from previous lives, existences, and sometimes their current lives we do things. But oftentimes, we would say that some of the more common ones are previous lives, existences, things we've done in the past that are manifesting now because, of course, we don't, for- although we forget a lot, a majority of what happens to us still in our unconscious mind, the memories are there. And sometimes they surface in the forms of certain emotions. So we would say as a general whole, that's kind of what Joanna talks about as the reasons of the psychopathology of, um, of guilt. Exactly. So she talks about guilt from that perspective and she gives us the mechanisms of guilt, as you mentioned. Now, let us just go by the ways to release it, as she says, just to emphasize a little more on how we can conquer guilt and release it. It's interesting the way she says, release guilt. Um, It's more than conquer. It's about letting go, and she says, forgiveness is the antidote. Mm -hmm. And in this case, she's talking about self-forgiveness, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. A difficult road, a long road for those who have to go through this, but it's simple, self-forgiveness. At least in, in in the word itself, it seems simple. But it is a process as well, this, uh, this forgiveness for to oneself. And she says to oneself, to the victim, to the community, or to nature, to all things. And really, again, mm-hmm. it goes back to this love therapy, not just for yourself, but also through works of charity. Being able to express that helps us a lot to forgive ourselves because then we begin to focus on the positive, bringing up the positive values and virtues within ourselves help us to rise out of that guilt or depression leading with guilt or causes of guilt, really. Exactly. And when we talk about guilt, almost inevitably we talk about resentment. And Joanna DeAngelis Kirsten talks about resentment as being caused by 
pride. Pride that, as she says, creates the need for power. And when it becomes frustrated, then it turns into resentment. So the root cause of resentment is pride. And she says, Kirsten, that it can be quite destructive because it creates disturbing conflicts, depression, revenge, even spiritual obsession. I think this is a concept that we want to elaborate more, Kirsten, because I remember the parable of the unmerciful servant that was uh, taught by Jesus. And he says in that parable that the Lord forgave the man who owed him something. But the minute the man was in the streets and found somebody who owed him something, he was merciless regarding somebody else's debt. Then the guards of the Lord of the land actually saw him in his merciless behavior. And the Lord said, okay, bring him back. And he turned to the unmerciful servant and said, you are not fulfilling my perspective in life. So now you're going to be in prison. So he talks about, you know, figuratively how we are imprisoning ourselves when we are resented with somebody else. Kirsten, what would be Joana D'Angeli's liberation therapy for resentment? Well, we would just like to read directly from what she says because it's quite moving and it's, it's inspiring for us, really. Um, she talks about the individual should contribute to working on himself, working on these issues that he has. And she says more specifically, she says here that in every circumstance, the individual should contribute with his will, without which the whole promise and another person's cooperation are unfortunately useless and even more unpleasant for the patient. So in other words, or in part, we must also want to change during this liberation therapy. We must come to this realization to want to let go of resentment, to want to eradicate it, as she says. Um, a couple other things she says, we wanted to read from here as well, is that the record directly from page 59, specifically for those who would like to read it, she says the being in himself is not a bearer of cruelty, but the experiences of the evolution process wake up that negative face that can and should be corrected by, by the application of the resources of altruism, kindness, morality, and cooperation with the other creatures of the world. So we should stop ruminating, stop fixating ourselves on things, and go come out of ourselves. And that's why volunteerism, mm -hmm. charity, works of charity are so good for the soul, are so good for us, because we refocus our mind off the negative and onto something more positive. And it reminds us of something that uh, Joanna Dion just says in one of the meditation books when she talks about conflicts. And she says it really is just a problem of fixation. We become fixated on things and people and circumstances and emotion and what someone did to me and I wanted it and I didn't get it like a child does. But if you notice, just like a child, if you help the child to focus on something else, they tend to begin to forget it, and those past emotions begin to dissolve away. So it seems simplistic in nature, like, oh, all I have to do is to do some charity work. So I'm, I'm sure it's not so simple, and it takes time, but it is a step in the right direction, being altruistic and kind, right? Yes, that's correct. Kirsten, you already started touching the greatest therapy of all which is charity, and that's correlated to love. After the break, which is the last break, we're going to talk about the crowning therapy for every existential conflict right after the break, okay? Sure. We will return to our program after these messages. Want to learn more about the ins and outs of mediumship? The book 
in the realms of mediumship by the spirit doctor Andre Luiz through the medium Chico Xavier analyzes the various aspects of mediumistic communication and mediumship. He also praises the efforts of mediums who are faithful to the spiritual mandate they received before they reincarnated, warning them about the risks of badly practiced exchanges between the two worlds. Buy your copy today at www.edicei.of.america.com. The Spiritist Magazine is a trimestral digital periodical that publishes the latest news on the Spiritist thought and the movement in the USA and worldwide at www.spiritistmagazine.com. Spread the word. Kardec Radio. To learn more about Spiritism. Study Spiritism online at eSpiritism. eSpiritism is an online tool to promote the study and practice of Spiritism while contributing to the preparation of Spiritist practitioners. For full access to courses, go to www.e-spiritism.org. If you missed out on your previous shows, no worries. We have an on-demand section of all previous shows and interviews. Go to our website at www.cardacradio.com. Emmanuel's Novels The reputable mentor, Emmanuel, wrote a five-book series of spiritist novels that can truly transform your life. Starting with 2,000 years ago, Emmanuel delights our minds with the true account of characters that are so similar to each of us. Discover yourself in Emmanuel's novels and live better. Buy your copy today at www.edicei.com. And now we return to our program. So, dear listener, we hope you're enjoying because these are such important topics in our lives. Many problems happen nowadays because people have existential conflicts. They don't know what to do. They're feeling afraid. They're feeling angry. They have laziness, jealousy, violence, etc. Don't know what to do. This book by Joana de Angelis, Existential Conflicts, is phenomenal because it really helps us understand who we are, the mechanisms of our problems and solutions, therapeutic solutions. And the crowning one of them is love. Kirsten, when Joana de Angelis talks about love, she talks about the psychogenesis of love, meaning the psychological origins of love. What does she say say in that regard? Mm. She Basically, what she means is that if we we could think back into the animal kingdom, we see that the small seed of love in some way, shape, or form exists there in the embryonic stages. And I remember when we were initially, we discussed this topic, we were referencing the book Evolution in Two Worlds, that you know, that it, in its embryonic stages, it exists in the smallest of things. And as unimaginable as it may, may seem, it even exists in the small molecules, somehow in shape and form, love in its smallest form, God's love for us. But this, the psychogenesis of love, it, un, it unfolds over many centuries through the instincts in the animal kingdom until we reach the human kingdom where it still isn't yet all that it should be. But oftentimes it's misinterpreted and oftentimes it's misunderstood. We say we love someone or something. And what's most interesting, we learn, we study spiritism. We come to find out, especially when we study the spirits book, that all creatures of God, even the most perverse ones, have this seed of love in its very, we would say, rudimentary form. For example, we could have someone who perhaps is uh, 
dare we say, a murderer. But even sometimes those people have some sort of fixation on plants sometimes or an object or a thing or sometimes they, they love their car. And it seems so um, sad to say that someone can be very obsessed with their car and love it so much, but it's a rudimentary love. Later in life it will be evolved into an emotion where they will be able to express that to the rest of the human race. But for right now, it's still growing. So it actually gives us a little bit of hope. We love the way that Joanna explains it because it's very hopeful for humanity as a whole that we will get there someday. Right? That's right. Yes. She talks about the development of it and she talks about the concept of sublimating um, feelings and the sublimation of love. I I think um, this is so important because she talks about this hierarchy of feelings and she goes hand in hand with the teachings by Kardec in the Gospel according to Spiritism when talking about love the spirits explain to Kardec that there is an evolution from sensations from instincts to sensations and then feelings as uh, we were just talking about here. So, Kirsten, if somebody is listening to us and they are feeling something, we could tell them, right, that there is always a solution and a way out. There is always a way to conquer these difficult feelings and raise our vibrations and overcome them, knowing that everything shall pass. Could we say that Existential conflicts also shall pass. Absolutely, absolutely, because it's just a, we would say, a quality or a characteristic of those that are on the evolutionary path and that are moving forward. Because it's when we don't have, or when we think we don't have any conflicts at all, that 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 is a problem. That is a conflict. Because it's normal and we should have conflicts. As Joanna has explained to us before, that once I'm going from the old person that I used to be to wanting to embrace a new way of life, I'm going to encounter conflicts. Conflicts are good. We should embrace them and not fear them. It is by embracing them that we will begin to understand ourselves and understand the conflict in and of itself. Because if we, I believe that's why she starts with the very first chapter of Psychological Escape. Because the majority of, of humanity, or, or perhaps I shouldn't be so unkind to humanity, but some people are in this sleeping mode. They're not even conscious yet. They're not even awake because they're, they've already over many incarnations formed this psychological escape. So we should not be afraid of our every, everyday problems, confront them head on, and utilize the power of prayer, of faith, of attending your spirit to center or your spiritual practice or religion to seek the assistance from God to deal with the issues because that is part of our experience is growing our faith and learning what it means to be okay, as you had said, about the unknown and knowing that it's a process. Let's just keep moving forward and, and be faithful, right? Yes. That's correct. Moving forward is the way to go. Kirsten, the good news for the listener is that there is always a way out. There is always a solution. There is always a therapeutic process. And the important thing is first to be aware. So once we are aware of the existential conflict, we can work around it, manage it, and be hopeful that everything shall pass. Kirsten, would you like to share final comments with the listener regarding this study that we were um, sharing with the listeners today? We, I would like to share that you are not alone. We are not alone. Everyone endures problems of different circumstances, of different nature, but we are not alone. And do not underestimate the power of prayer and a true desire to change. And we would have to suggest you, or anyone, to seek out God and a relationship, whether it's going to a spiritual center or their particular religious 
background or preference, but any relationship with God beginning today is a good step in dealing with existential conflicts. That's wonderful, Kirsten. We thank you so much for your time and your presence here at Kardec Radio, Radio Always. Right now, I would like to invite everyone to join us in our final prayer. Prayer, as Joanna D'Angeli says, is a good therapy. It's a way to relieve our hearts, to change our vibratory uh, scenario, and also to shift our state of mind. So let us raise our thoughts, open our hearts, connect to our guardian angels, who are the messengers of God in our lives. Dear loving guides, who are sent by God to care for us, thank you. Thank you for this moment in which we learned more about ourselves and how natural some challenges may present themselves in our lives. We hope that at this very moment, all those who are feeling, experiencing, these existential conflicts that we mention receive the shower of your loving care. May all those, especially the ones who create disturbances, be rescued, be in the presence of your messengers as well and we thank you so much for the presence of Joana de Angelis and Nivaldo Franco in all of our lives hoping that we exercise these awareness that we practice the steps of solutions proposed for each and every existential conflict so we can become freer more empowered and first and foremost faithful to God which actually means surrendering our lives to our Father Mother God and so be it Listener, we hope you have enjoyed this discussion and these reflections. We could give you much, much more, but we would recommend read the book, Existential Conflict by Joana de Angelis de Paulo Franco. If you have a hard time finding the book, drop us a line at kardecreader.com. We have our contact form, and there you can write to us talking about your opinions, your suggestions, and your, you know, how you can also help Kardec Radio because we are always in need of great help because the radio is really expanding and more and more people are listening to it each and every day. Next week when we come back, we're going to talk about spirited songs for children. Can you believe there are many already in English? Alba Morales and Steve Shepard from the SSB, will be here to talk about them and to delight your heart so you can listen the beautiful songs that the good and loving spirits have promoted and brought to us on this life. For now, we wish you lots of blessings. Thank you for listening to Kardec Radio. 
Broadcasting live every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Email us and share your comments at www.cardecradio.com. Until next time, we wish you many blessings.